Welcome to Toll Talks. Let's build a world. So today we're going to be talking about how to build the ter- uh, world with a terrain editor in Unity. It's actually a very simple but pretty powerful tool for what it offers. And I cannot do all of the things I wanted to demonstrate because my computer cannot record and do all the uh, texture effects at the same time without blowing up. Uh, so I don't want my computer to go Samsung Note 7. So we're not going to. We're just going to have a small, small portion of that. Uh, but please play around with it, and you can probably figure out what's uh, the other effects and other things you can do with it. Hello. All right, this is the third attempt I've done trying to make the terrain um, tutorial. I don't think I'm going to be able to do all the effects. This computer just cannot record and handle the terrain at the same time. So please read through the chapter. This is chapter two, I believe, uh, but it's on it's on the line. Um, and again, the terrain editor is pretty cool for what it can for a simple way to get an analog, natural-looking terrain up. It can do a lot of neat things. One thing you're going to need is go up to Assets, Import Package, and then Import Import Environment. Uh, you don't always want to do this just because that this is going to um, make your project a lot bigger. Uh, but this will give you some textures we can play with. So after you do that, you can pause the video. It's going to take a couple of seconds. After you do that, we're going to Game Object, and we're going to go 3D Object and create Terrain. Now, right off the bat, the terrain is huge. It is designed to be an entire world, one terrain to rule them all. Like, I'm zooming out a lot here just to get around. We probably don't need that large of a terrain, especially for a proof of concept. So what I'm going to do is I've tried 50 and 50. I'm going to try to do 10 and 10 to see if my computer can handle that. This is probably too small, but, uh, but like I said, uh, hopefully my computer can handle it. 50 by 50 is usually was actually what I find to be a pretty good, a decent size. Another thing, so uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. When I create the terrain, if I, I click on it, I have all these little buttons. If I click on this little gear, I bring up all the terrain um, properties. And the terrain width and terrain set, uh, height length can be set. It's better to do it this way than scale your terrain, because if you scale the terrain, weird effects happen on the texturing. Also, the max height. If you're loading a height map, whatever is your max height is going to be whatever one corresponds on the height map. We're not going to be talk, doing height maps, but if you get if you load a height map and you get like a bunch of jagged looking peaks, it looks something like Dr. Seuss, your height map's probably too high. So we'll just say that we're going to call this uh, 50. So we're going to reduce the size there. So what's all of this do? So right here, this will raise and lower terrain. I can you know, select something. If I left click, it'll raise. If I um, hit shift, it'll lower it. This will set everything or try to set something toward a certain level. So for example, right now it's set at 3.95. I think I'm going to make this 5. Oh, not, not 53. 5. I can also flatten my terrain if I just mess up and want to start over. I'm going to flatten it. I'm going to move it to 5. You see the terrain jumped up. The reason I'm not going to have it at 0 is because I may want to lower terrain for like water and ponds. So it's not always it's good practice to have it above 0. This is a smoothing operation. I can you know, select whatever brush I want and I can smooth my peaks and my terrain and it will make it look a little bit more natural. This is my texture painter we're going to go through. I can load textures here and I can paint my terrain. I can paint grass, sand, etc., whatever I need. These I'm not going to do because I know my computer will die, but I can, I can paint trees onto my terrain. I can paint grass onto my terrain. You'll have to play with these on your own. So first of all, let's just go to terrain texture, a little edit textures. We'll add a texture. And I'm not even going to add any normalized vi- uh, images because I've discovered my computer just does not like it. And right now, we're going to go with uh, sand, which is down here. Sand albedo. And we'll hit add. Again, we're not going to put any normal textures on. And there's my sand. And I, um, 
the whole thing will be sand right now. But this will allow us to kind of see how the height changes. So I click on increase height and I can, this is a hard edge. Notice there's no, there's no fuzziness. This is a Gaussian. So the opacity is how much impact the brush is gonna have. And the brush size is, well, as you can see, how big the brush size is, in this case, um, 98. And this is the opacity is how much impact it has. So if I say max, well, let's not do max, let's do 50. 50 input and, and max brush size and I click here. Maybe difficult to see, but I've created a little bump. If I hold down the left button and I move the mouse a little bit, you'll see that I create a much larger bump, a much larger hill. If I create the, use the hard edge and I click it, I create a little plateau. If I increase the opacity to 100, I have a much larger um, plateau. Again, this is also set the ratio of the max height. If my max height was say 600, this would be, it would just grow exponentially really quick. So this is what's happening. This is what the, this is how I grow terrain. If I want to shrink terrain, I can just hit shift and I should probably use the Gaussian for this. I can drop the, I can drop the uh, train and make holes in the train down to zero. So maybe I don't like what I did. I can go back to level terrain and just hit flatten and I'll be, I'll be happy there. So going back to raised terrain, let's, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try to use a Gaussian at 50% and I'm gonna try to make, it's kind of like, oh, no, too much, too much. Yeah, I'm gonna have to shrink. Maybe I'll use a hard edge here. It is a little smoothing. I like having max opacity because it will have the greatest brush sizes too. It will not, but it will cover a, a multitude. a little bit. So here we go, we have something that resembles and I, I'm going to drop my coin. Um, um, to, well, should, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to drop them to uh, a lower value. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to create So anyway, I can just play, you can just play around with this, take some time, pause the video if you want. Averaging, so maybe I wanna take this averaging tool or this leveling tool and and then I can set it to me and maybe, and I can try to, Maybe I just don't like this peak here, so I can just level out the whole terrain. Done. I can kind of go smooth, smooth it out, and maybe increase my brush size. I four times since I've done this. So after that, I can look at my little island, see what see what I have. Click, I can kind of fly around it. Like a castle there or something, that kind of works. Okay, so here's my.
go to orthographic view. Yep. Oh, whew. yeah. Thought it died there. All right. I'll do one texture. We'll add grass. I have to select the grass. And then I can select my opacity and the target strength is how much it's going to blend into the previous, the previous texture. So if I have a low target strength, I'm going to just have a little bit of grass on top of my sand, which is, you know, cool. I'll do that around here. I'll just kind of get a little bit of color. And then if I have a large target strength, I'm going to overwrite the sand and just have grass, which I want up here. So if you take your time with this, you can kind of blend from sand to grass, and it actually looks quite nice. If you don't take your time with it, it'll look something like what I have here. But you can see that down here, I can see the sand and the grass, and here I just see grass, uh, a lot of grass. So that is how we're gonna do textures. And you can actually do more textures, like I could put rocks around here or something, and then have sand, or I could put this side could be rocks, maybe I'll Maybe I'll try that. We'll see if I can add one more texture. Come on, computer, hold together. Uh, I don't want, well, grass rock works. So, and I want this to be fairly, uh, fairly cliff-like. So I select this. So I'm going to have a pretty hard edge on this one, um, and I'll reduce my brush size. Substantially, not that small. And now here I can add some cliffs. So now I have like a what looks like a cliff uh, going into sand, a little bit of grass down there, um, and then I have my grass plateau where I could possibly put a castle or something. And now, um, for last, the last thing that's really, really cool in Unity, it used to have to pay for this. Let me add some rocks over here too. Uh, but now they've actually given you dynamic water. So now that you have this, uh, this terrain set up, and this is where my computer is probably going to die, but we'll give it one more shot. I can go to projects and look on standard assets. That's, by the way, where all these textures came from. And I can search for water. And say water. Um, we don't want water basic. We want uh, we want water pro, um, pro daytime and just drag it on like a plateau, or like a, like a prefab. And now we want to make sure that our water is set beneath, or where we we want to set the water to be wherever we want it on our texture. So I want it a little bit lower than that. So now if I look up. You see now the deep part or the lower part of my island is now below the water and the water comes up right to this large sandy beach. So if I use, get my camera, I move my camera up. Nope, not up, that's not going up. I can rotate the camera a little bit. And now if I play the game, you can see sort of the effect of having a, hopefully this will work. You can see my little terrain. You see the water here. Again, this is not very good. I honestly can't do anything bigger while I'm recording. The computer will die. But yours, I would set yours to be 50-50 and just play with it. You can create lakes by having holes in your, in your terrain and wherever the water level is, that'll become a lake. So you can design your world to be much more interesting than mine. But again, this is just kind of showing you the basics of the text editor, the terrain editor.